Hello everyone, welcome to this video on 5 essential steps to mastering DevOps by IntelliPath. DevOps has emerged as a critical aspect of software development, enabling teams to deliver high quality products at a faster pace. DevOps is not just a set of tools or practices, it's a crucial shift that requires collaboration, communication and continuous improvement. If you are new to DevOps or looking to improve your DevOps skills, this video is for you. In the next few minutes, we'll explore 5 essential steps that will help you master DevOps. These steps are practically proven and designed to help you implement DevOps best practices in your organization. Whether you are a developer, an operations specialist or a manager, this video will provide you with valuable insights into how you can leverage DevOps to improve your software development process. But before we begin with the session, make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so that you won't miss out on any technical update coming from our IntelliPath YouTube channel. Also guys, keep in mind that DevOps is not a career which college pass out students can offer. It is meant for people who are already part of software development procedure and are looking for growth in the field. Of course, stuff like knowledge about programming, operating systems, testing and deployment is a must. Beyond that, there are few more factors that build the basic notion of DevOps. Basically, we are going to touch upon them as these 5 essential steps or factors. So without further ado, let's dive into the session. The first step that you can take towards entering into DevOps is contemplate the DevOps culture. To become a DevOps engineer, the first and foremost thing is to understand the DevOps culture. It is all about different teams working together towards a common goal. In other words, there should not be any blaming culture between different IT teams. For example, if you are a DevOps engineer, never say it's not my job. Say, let me see what I can do to help. How you respond has a significant impact on collaboration. It doesn't mean you have to spoon feed people and do others work. IT leaders and decision makers should ensure the entire team is mentored on DevOps cultural aspects before getting into DevOps toolset. It avoids lot of confusion in the team. It usually doesn't happen in organizations and they end up having a DevOps team for operations which again ends up in a siloed structure. People would stop hiding the truth and stop blaming others for project issues once they understand that an issue in project delivery has to be addressed in a collaborative manner rather than pointing fingers. Once you take a deep dive into the DevOps culture, you would stop saying that CI CD and infrastructure automation is all that DevOps is all about. Once you take a deep dive into the DevOps culture, you'd stop saying that CI CD and infrastructure automation is all that DevOps about. You'd see it as a philosophy. Alright, that being said, let's move to the next essential step. That is, learning how infrastructure components work. The basic building block of any organization is its infrastructure. It could be either on the cloud or on-premise data center. And to be able to get aboard DevOps team, it's crucial thing to know about that as well. For example, when you get into meetings with network security teams with a fair amount of infrastructure knowledge, you can ask the right questions, understand what they are saying and collaborate better. All the way around, if you are unaware about infrastructure, collaborating with them will become quite a difficult task. There is a big difference when you say it's not working, can you look into this and hey, I have done my initial troubleshooting and here are my findings, can you look into this further and help us understand what's causing this issue, right? So that's the right approach to approach any problem with DevOps mindset. Third essential step on our list is learning all the details about cloud as much as you can alongside container orchestration and distributed systems. Remember guys, there is no DevOps without cloud. It's a self-explanatory but still let me simplify a bit. For that, let me ask you a simple question. Would you think about doing DevOps for your local machine? The answer is straight cut no, isn't it? Yes, we don't bother DevOps for local development environments. 
but we do care when we are thinking about hosting applications in the cloud, managing multiple applications and servers, and monitoring both applications as well as infrastructure for staging and production environments. Currently, there are multiple cloud service providers out there, out of which three are holding top market share. Those are AWS, Azure, and GCP. To be part of DevOps culture, you must learn all the toolkits available on these platforms. Moving to the next slide, let's also talk about container orchestration and distributed systems. Distributed systems are the basic building blocks for modern scalable infrastructure. You need to understand the basic concept of distributed systems because most tools that you use for microservices are distributed in nature. For example, Kubernetes. Also, container adoption is increasing day by day. The organization you work for might not be using containers now. However, it is best to have hands-on knowledge of container technology like Docker or Podman. It will gain you some competitive edge among your peers. Once you understand Docker, you can start learning about container orchestration tools like Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, etc. These platforms are best suited for microservice-based architecture. Also, there is a concept of service mesh. It is an advanced topic in the container space. If you are a beginner to container toolset, you can learn this after gaining a good amount of knowledge in container orchestration and microservice-based architecture. Now that brings us to the next, that is fourth step on our list, that is observability, logging and monitoring. Next essential step on our list is observability, logging and monitoring. These things are basically fundamental aspects of an infrastructure. All apps deployed in the infrastructure will produce logs and metrics. Logs are pushed and stored in a logging infrastructure based on architecture and design. Every company would have a logging and monitoring infrastructure. Commonly used logging stacks are Splunk and ELK. Also, there are few SaaS companies like Logly which provide logging infrastructure. For monitoring, there are open source tools like Prometheus and Nagios and enterprises tools like App Dynamics, Datadog, SignalFX, etc. Developers, operation teams and security teams use logging systems to monitor, troubleshoot and audit applications and infrastructure. Also, for AI ops, log data plays a key role. In every organization, mission critical applications are monitored 24 by 7 using monitoring dashboards. Generally, dashboards use data from logging sources or metrics generated by the application. Also, there would be alerting systems that use the rules configured in the monitoring systems for alerting. For example, an alert could be triggered as a Slack notification, Jira ticket, email alert, ServiceNow incident ticket, or XMatter phone call. Alerting workflows differ from organization to organization. As a DevOps engineer, you should be able to query logs and troubleshoot issues in non-prod and prod environments. Understanding regular expressions is very important to query logs in any logging tool. Final step we have here is master continuous integration and continuous delivery tools. Continuous integration and delivery pipeline is essential in software development using DevOps approach. Basically guys, continuous integration is a software development practice where developers merge every code change they do into a single repository. Whereas on the other hand, continuous delivery is a term related to implementing code changes that are automatically built, tested and prepared for a production release. Some of the commonly used tools that you can put to use to this end are GitHub, Travis CI, GitLab, Bamboo, Azure DevOps and Jenkins. Also, to contemplate the field of such vastness, a whale teller training program will be the better opt to choose. While the internet is full of wonderful and free resources like these, it won't give you the structured approach or hands-on practice that you need to become DevOps professional. If you want to become an employable DevOps person, the most effective way to do so is through a specialized program or course.
Intellipath does provide state of the art certification that is designed according to different sets of industry standards and it can definitely act as a ladder for your career change with an exciting salary hike. So visit the website and start exploring. That being said, I wish you good luck on your day ops journey. I hope these steps will help you plan your learning schedule. That's all we have for this video. I hope this video was informative for all of you guys out there willing to take your career to new heights with DevOps. Thank you for being here till the end of this video. If you have liked this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to enable subscribe button to never miss any update from IntelliPath YouTube channel. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in cloud computing, then IntelliPath provides an advanced certification on cloud and DevOps by IIT Madras. This course is taught by industry experts and IIT Madras faculty. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.